Well, it's it's funny because talking to Andy Sutton, I was just with him in Orange County, you know, last week, and and even you know uh, Sean way back in you know seven years ago, having them talk on camera about yeah. you know this idea of full body integrated motion, and they related it to Viper, but you know this idea, this concept of facilitating the entire body in in their approaches for athletic training. They, they get it, and it's yeah. kind of interesting to see because they don't come from our background of you know exercise physiology and biomechanics and movement, but yeah. somehow intuitively through the use of their bodies at a, at a top level for years and years, they, they seem to get it, and uh, you know they echo the same sentiment and the same message that, that you've kind of just spoken about in that you know movement is, is key. Uh, the idea of the entire body is key. Uh, mm -hmm. Positional strength and stability are elements that are key, and I always often kind of laugh because you know they they get it more than you know a lot of us do because they're yeah. they're able to feel it right. Well, Andy's a great a great guy to have a conversation about that with because here's a player who's played enough and long enough and gone through enough injuries to recognize what is going to help him best, right? And you know you hate to say it, but hindsight is always you know, your, your best teacher, because at yeah. the end of the day, you know, you've got an individual who's gone through and experienced what it's like to be a professional athlete. And then they can share that, you know, experience with somebody who's just coming up the pipeline. And, and, and I, and I would argue too, that, that, uh, those young players coming up the pipeline right now, they are listening. They, they, they do, they, they're heeding the information. They're understanding, they look up at these players and they, they understand that, that what, the knowledge that they have to share relative to successes with training and preparation and all the rest of it becomes so key. But the thing that, Michelle, that really stands out for me when we talk about this issue of strength is the whole issue of timing, which you're yeah. constantly, you know, um, uh, getting at me with relative to, you know, really trying to conceptualize specifically what happens. And, and what we find is that when the hips and the thoracic spine become, um, you know, if you want to use a term dysfunctional or become challenged by the rigors of the game and the pattern overload, once we start to see that fascial system starting to fortify this new postural starting position for players, that's when we get we begin to see things like poor core stability or core, poor core strength or a reduction in strength. So a lot of the in-season stuff becomes really hell-bent around trying to establish good mobility through those tissues and and try to establish good starting positions so that when they're angling, it becomes that much easier. When they're in a skating position, it becomes that much easier. When they get halfway through the season, you know, the rigors of the game don't seem to phase them as much because they've been working so consistently yeah. on trying to establish proper timing and proper sequencing. Yeah. Now, Benny, I mean, the idea of timing is critical. And we, as we start to vet research more and more, yeah. Benny, I mean, it just becomes more and more important that muscles are turning on and off at the right time. And, times, and, yeah. and lifting versus shifting patterns, moving a, a mass up versus a moving a mass yeah. through a field of gravity, cr critically different, critically yeah. different as it relates to what the muscles are doing. So we can't say that lifting and shifting are the same thing because from the muscular perspective, they're completely different. But I'm yeah, wondering if, if, you're, if, if you can give me... Uh, and the viewers here, just a simple example of what you might do in season with an athlete that's in the midst of an 80, what, four game schedule, 82 game schedule, 84, game schedule, yeah. uh, 82 game schedule, you know, what you might do with them over the course of the season to, to just kind of maintain their movement ability or to improve their mo movement ability. Uh, in season, so to get, give, give us a simple well, example of what you well, might the do. The one thing that we do, Michelle, um, I, I, I know you have not, you and I haven't actually had conversations about this, but the one thing we do use is the FMS screen. Yeah. And the reason we use the screen is because we like the fact that it is a simple, easy baseline for us to establish some consistency with whether we're seeing changes. So as we go through the course of the season, we're actually looking at whether mobility stability changes relative to the different stages of the season. Yep. Um, this is a great barometer because what it does is allows us to, to really, it gives us great insight as to, you know, we're always looking for some objectivity. Mm -hmm. And objectivity becomes an important component of feedback to an athlete or feedback to a player. So we take that information and, and initially we get that nice baseline set at training camp, at going into training camp. And then we use that, you know, at, at, at different stages. Every month we're, we're doing screening process with the players. And the idea is that that allows us to determine what path or what course we need to take with the player. And what we find is that as they get towards that Christmas time, we start to notice big changes in the screens. 
And so where they're normally getting threes, they're starting to get twos, and we're starting to see some asymmetries and possibly some pulls and some strains. So it really allows us to be very proactive about what kinds of things we need them doing in the gym. And so getting back to this whole thing of timing, well, we want to try and reestablish the timing in the player's body's ability to move. So, you know, simply, I mean, I, I use Viper a ton. I've talked to you about this before, that, that Viper, we've created a very simple, uh, a, lot, a lot of the stuff was created through Nick Luciano's work relative to the flow and the movement sequences. And I just love it because, you know, with the hockey players, we're always trying to get reestablished, good thoracic spine mobility, we want to see lateral flexion, we want to see good rotation, we want to see good extension capability, um, albeit some, you know, everybody's at a different point uh, with some a lot, with, with a lot of that, but essentially those become important components. I really like the Infinity series that, that, that Nick uses in, in, in a lot of his flow series, and so we use a lot of that patterning, but we're also combining that in an integrated way because we're also working on the hips as well, so we've got not only do we have forward patterns and lateral patterns and crossover patterning and cross under sequencing that's very similar to the game and similar to the hip demands that come. So we've got we've got affinity patterns happening up top. We've got crossover sequences and lateral patterning and working in all three planes on the bottom end. So we and that actually becomes a five to ten minute circuit and it's continuous. And by the time you take a player from start to finish through that, what you end up with is an athlete that's got a very uh, like they, they're sweating, but they're not exhausted they're really just refining pattern and refining movement and and that's something that we've had tremendous success with andy's really bought into the whole concept of of, of that type of thing yeah and then from there depending on where we need to go we then incorporate some of the other lifting sequences and more of the shifting elements but using larger tools in order to be able to get at those things and i think you've, you've kind of laid it out perfectly benny because you know, we really can't say that strength is, you know, a phase of your training that lives on an island. It, yeah. it, it You know, it really is a process yeah. where, you know, mobility is, if it's enhanced, then tissue yeah. accessibility is increased. In other words, we can start to utilize the tissues and their elastic potential a lot better. And if we can yeah. start doing that, then we're stronger, but we're more also more efficient at the same time. Absolutely. Right? So we don't have to use as much of the muscular system. Now, if I'm a hockey player and I'm not using yeah. as much of the muscular system because, let's say, you know, you have me improve my dynamicness, my movement capabilities, and, and then my, ta my let's say, my connective tissue is more responsive, yeah. well, then I'm accessing more, you know, potential kinetic energy storage within the yeah. viscoelastic structures of the body. I don't have to, you know, overuse my, my muscles. There's a redundancy in the muscles, so my muscles can use something else. Uh, and they can use the skin better, and they can use the collagen network of the body better. Yeah. And that affords me more metabolic efficiency. Uh, it affords me more strength, positional and otherwise. There's yeah. more power output. And, uh, you know, like my load patterns are a lot more effective, so my timing is more effective. Yeah. And so, you know, all these things are co-mingling to make what we call an athletic body. Absolutely. Right? And, and so, you know, I think what we have to do is, is really kind of erase this silo in our brain of this is this, this is stability, this is, you know, agility, and this is strength. Because they all live together and they all commingle together, and that's what we call yeah. human performance, really. Yeah. Uh, so, it makes, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm glad you touched on the whole issue of the metabolic efficiency because that is something that we've noticed a big difference on is that when you get players moving and moving well, moving efficiently, Re-establishing proper movement ability, that they will, that they will, you know, anecdotally give you feedback that that they actually feel like they're having to work less, like their their movement on the ice is less difficult. It's less cumbersome. It's less restrictive. And you know, and I'll always, you know, I'll always sort of add to that that hey, you know, when you're feeling your best, when you're out there and you're actually the game becomes real simple for you, right? It's largely when your body is moving properly with good timing and and it's where your body feels loose it's it's where you know you don't feel like you're being inhibited when you're working against your body system that's where the fatigue sets in and that becomes so paramount like there there's no other professional schedule in the world that's as tough as the nhl schedule 82 games is a grind we fly a ton we have a western we're a western based club which means that we travel more than anybody else outside of the vancouver canucks we've got tremendous stress that's placed on the players and so when you're sitting in a plane imagine what your body feels like when you get get, get up out of that plane after four hours like, uh, i know <laughs> it's it's not yeah you know better than I, anybody. i'm no athlete but i know what it feels like <laughs> you know what it's like and and uh 
don't kid yourself. It takes a couple days to get used to that. And, uh, and, and, and so, 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 I mean, we're just, I mean, I guess essentially we're just talking about the same thing, which is the fact that the movement component is such a big part of this definition of own strength. Yeah. Well, Benny, listen, I appreciate you, sh you sharing your thoughts. I mean, your experience in the last, what, 20 odd years in, in, yeah. in, in, in conditioning individuals of all levels, um, you know, has really taught me a lot through the years. Uh, you have, you've had a, a tremendous impact on the, on the athletes that you've touched, Benny. I mean, I know that personally from talking to them and yeah. it, it kind of goes back to what Hork said, you know, early days when we were, you know, when you were training with him yeah. and he came back to us and he said, guys, the, the game has, has slowed down for me, you know, yeah. training whole body movements and using tools like Viper, you know, allow me to kind of express the body so that the, the application, the transfer into the, into the sport is a lot more authentic and, and the game slowed down. So, you, you know, I, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us. And also, you know, I'm excited about the hockey program that, uh, that you're going to be creating with Viper nice. as well because it's going to have a lot of tangible merit to the game itself. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and, and, and just to add to that too, Michelle, just, just with, the, with the hockey program that we're going to roll out for Viper, that we're really going to be looking a lot at those demands that, that the players are, are, are facing. And what's exciting about it is that, you know, there are unique demands, and, and I'm not saying unique in the sense that, yeah, every, every sport needs a healthy T-spine, every sport needs healthy hips, but I'm talking about there's very specific demands, warding demands, there's, there's, there's puck protection demands, there's, you know, you talk about the shifting component um, that, that, you know, obviously Viper elicits when, when you use the tool properly, um, that, that the whole shifting component becomes such an integral part of, of, of the hockey-specific training, and so for those people out there that are you know, wondering how the application or how Viper is to be used moving forward, you just need to take a look at what we're going to roll out with respect to the Viper hockey programming because it is going to be very specific to the, the demands of the game and the things that are going to be encompassed with, you know, with players relative to what they have to survive on a day-by-day, on a -day, practice practice, game-by-game basis, year-by-year -year basis. Yeah, and I think that's so important. So I yeah. uh, appreciate your time, buddy. Okay, thanks, bud. All right, man. All the best. You bet.